Now, what also would help in this case, in, in a lot of cases actually, is you're going to go through and you're going to see that whenever you actually launch a plugin, whatever plugin it is, it always goes to this factory default, right? So you have this preset plugin librarian area that we've kind of mentioned before, right? This is where you have your library of presets that you can click on and say, oh, here's a preset from Avid for, you know, Horn EQ add fullness or whatever. Right? And you can use the plus and the minus keys over here to navigate up and down the list if you're going through and auditioning different presets. <clears throat> so, but the thing is, these are just kind of standard factory presets, and it has the factory default setting, which is like turning it on for the first time, everything goes to zero. What might actually make a lot of sense in this case is for you to save your own presets, because you know, if you go through and you're working on, let's say, your guitars or your vocal tracks, and you kind of start to get a sense of what sounds good. And, you know, for the most part, it might pretty much be the same sort of EQ setting from song to song because it sounds good, right? So <clears throat> as you go through and make changes to your, your plugins, you're like, you know what, I'd really like to have this setting easily accessible so I don't have to go back every time in every session and recreate the settings by dragging the buttons around and whatnot. This is where you want to use your plugin library and menu over here, this little round button with the upside down triangle. And <clears throat> you have the ability to save settings or save settings as. Um, now, you cannot overwrite the factory default. It, even if I hit save settings, it will take me into a save as because the factory default setting is kind of locked from you being able to overwrite it all right so now this will automatically take you whenever you do uh save as or save essentially this will take you to a special place on the hard drive where every single plugin has its own settings folder so it's actually called the plugin settings folder and every plugin on your computer has a folder in here with the settings that this is what it reads when it actually goes through and you're like, oh, okay, follow this settings file or follow that settings file. So where's my EQ3 seven band? Always takes me to some weird place. All right, so it does take you to that plugins folder automatically. And you know it has uh, subfolders in a lot of cases, you can create your own subfolder by hitting this new folder button down here at the bottom, which is what I've done here. So that way I have my own Mihai folder within the main folder structure of the EQ3. And then I can say, okay, this is my, you know, MB July settings or, or whatever you want to call it. So now when I look at my preset list, that becomes the name. So it takes over the factory default, obviously, because it just recalls the current one that you saved as. But when you look at the list down here, you can have your library that you created within that folder. And here's all the different settings files that I've created. And I can just quickly go between them and not have to recreate that settings file for that same vocalist that I've done a bunch of times. And I know what their EQ should sound like as a starting point. Right. Now, these presets, once you save them, they're available in all sessions. So you go to any session on this computer, it reads the same preset library. So you'll have access to all the presets in every single session. Right. Now, the thing that sometimes might also make sense with this is, you know, if I were to go in here and remove this plugin, let's say, I launch it again on a new track and I'm like, oh yeah, go launch that EQ plugin again. It launches with the factory default setting, right? Even though I still have my settings here in the list and I can go and recall it, right? What if I wanted to actually launch the plugin in my session with one of my settings files? Because the factory default is just everything back at zero. So maybe it'll just be faster to work with our own settings file as the factory default. So first step is to save your own settings file, right? So you save it and you're like, oh, okay, it's here or it's here in the list, wherever it is. Recall that plugin setting. And then from the uh, settings menu over here, click on it 
and then towards the bottom, but, not, but the second from the bottom, you have this feature here called set as user default. This will define the currently uh, open settings file as what we're going to call the user default setting. Cool. Step two is you come in here again, and you go down to the very bottom now to settings preferences. So you come to settings preference, and then you have this set plugin default to. Like, what is the plugin default setting set to? Right now, and default is set to factory setting. We're going to switch it to user setting. Because we identified our previous setting file as our user default, it's going to see that and be like, oh, okay, you want me to launch this plugin from now on with the user default setting, not the factory setting. So once again, if I were to go in and say, oh, okay, cool, I've got a new session, and I want to you know, go to this track, and on this insert point, I want to launch this EQ. Notice it automatically launched with the user setting I identified instead of the factory default setting that comes that it comes with. So it's a, it's a basically a three-step process. Save your own settings file. Then using the menu, uh, after you recall that settings file, set that user setting file as your user default. And then under your settings preferences, set your uh, default plugin to the user setting from the factory setting. Right, so those three steps you follow to have these plugins on your system always launch with your own preset as opposed to the factory preset.